Okay, um, last net dev, I gave a talk about um, you know evaluating um, BBR against um, against the um, the cubic over um, you know wi uh, Wi-Fi. I'm um, not the Wi-Fi. The um, um, the four G network. Um, and then um, at that time, I actually showed that there is a possibility to improve the end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, um, TCP performance by using um, um, the recent generation of TCP congestion avoidance algorithm, which um, are based on the uh, you know RDT to actually uh, avoid uh, detect and avoid the uh, the congestion. Um, however, um, it's probably going to take some uh, you know time. Uh, for uh, these new algorithms to be adopted, uh, you know, widely in the internet, um, but um, as a uh, wireless uh, service provider, um, we might not want to actually wait for uh, you know that time, but um, do little um, things to actually improve uh, the uh, the the TCP performance on the wireless. So how can we do that? I mean. Um, there is um, you know, potential to actually use the uh, you know, layer 4 uh, performance in its proxy um, to um, uh, what is it, to bridge the, um, uh, the two different congestion co uh, avoidance algorithm. And um, that actually uh, would be a, a, a fairly good solution for us. Okay, um, so if uh, we are doing this, then what would be the, uh, the best way to actually implement the, uh, the path? Uh, first of all, um, I would like to, uh, you know, the, uh, you know uh, what is that, the, uh, the fast time to market would be a, a, a very um, you know, nice feature. And um, I also would like to uh, have our solution uh, fast adapt to emerging technology and uh, also reduce the software maintain headache. So. An attractive solution for us is to uh, using a transparent um, performance in its proxy using open source TCP proxy uh, on top of Linux so that I can um, use the, um, um, the Linux TCP networking stack. Um, and maybe we should, I, I can actually use like, you know, uh, congestion control algorithms like BBR or DC TCP or even let's say, a homegrown, uh, you know, TCP algorithm for the wireless side while still using um, the cubic on the uh, server side, basically. Okay, so, um, so um, the deployment model that we uh, have been um, thinking of is the following. So, first of all, the proxy servers are front-ended by um, layer three load balancers. Uh, in this talk, I'm not going to talk about the uh, the routing or the load load balancer design, because um, probably you guys actually know better than me. Um, also, um, in this picture, um, basically, um, you know, it seems like it's a two different uh, network with a two separate spine, but uh, in reality, it could be uh, uh, one. Um, uh, this one and this one could be a, a same spine with the um, uh, different VLAN. So um, that is under the possibility in deployment scenario, and that would be the um, worst scenario for me to actually handle the uh, the pop and push the uh, the VLAN text, and um, that might actually impact the uh, the performance. So that is actually another thing that uh, I um, that we um, um, assumed for the POC. Um, and then we're going to deploy, um, we are assuming we are going to deploy um, the L3, uh, L4 proxies um, in like, you know, some of the servers and then have the, um, the layer three load balancers actually um, uh, load balance the traffic perhaps using uh, ECMP. Okay, so that's basically um, our um, assumption of the deployment model. Okay, so, um, so um, this, um, the call flow just shows that there are, are there will be uh, you know two connections um, on the other sides of the uh, transparent proxy, and um, the source IP is spoofed on the um, the destination uh, when when we actually initiate the um, the, the TCP connection to the uh, server. Um, for this. Um, POC, uh, we use the um, the Ixia 
um, for the uh, two actually emulate the client and server. Um, and then in the middle, uh, we use the um, a blade server um, with running the HA proxy uh, version 1.4 um, in transparent mode. I'm going to explain what, what I mean by transparent mode next slide. Um, we end up running 20 HA proxy um, processes um, in that server. So um, this actually summarized the, um, um, the, the, uh, our blade server. Um, which has two NUMA circuits, um, and uh, the CPUs that we use is um, Intel uh, Xenon uh, E5. Uh, I believe this is uh, Sandy Bridge. Um, uh, has uh, 14 cores um, and two, um, two threads per core, so basically 28 hyper threads. And the NIC that we actually use for this POC uh, was Intel um, I40E card. And the uh, the kernel version that we actually run was 4.11.0. Okay, so typical uh, transparent proxy configuration. If you actually Google like you know, how to how to uh, you know configure a TCP um, transparent TCP proxy, you probably want to see this. Um, so the basic thing is, first of all, you actually have to set the socket option. Um, uh, IP transparent socket option um, so that um, it will um, you know accept the uh, the packet even though the destination IP is not you know towards me so it will only um, use the um, the port number to actually accept the uh, the packet okay so um, that's one thing and then basically now we actually have to uh, also um, set up the uh, the filter um, for the uh, the packet that needs to be uh, proxy serviced, um, you can use IP tables to, um, you know, set up the, uh, the the filter. So basically, the first line says all TCP um, destination port 80, which is HTTP, uh, you know, proxy uh, um, HTTP traffic, um, use the uh, the T proxy um, um, destination. Um, and then the T proxy, if it's re listening on uh, port one two three four, that needs to be specified here. And then um, it's also asking to uh, use the SKB mark uh, set to one. So um, okay. And for the return traffic, this applies to SYN. Um, and then all the return traffic, um, basically uh, acts or the data packets and stuff like that. The second line says TCP. If we have a you know a socket, a local socket in the um, um, in basic loopback device, then um, set the mark equals to one. So um, that's basically uh, what you uh, what you usually do to actually set up the uh, the filter. Then basically you just add an IP um, rule um, to a certain table. In this case, table one. Say. Anything, uh, any marked packet, uh, you know, send the packet to the, uh, you know, the um, the loopback device. Basically, um, so this is the things that you actually have to set up to actually do the um, the transparent proxy routing. However, um, when we are actually uh, facing this, I don't, we didn't really want to actually do this in the host. Um, what is it? The um, the host, uh, you know. Uh, machine because I if you want to actually productize this, uh, you know, the thing, then you probably want to log into um, those, uh, you know, host and do some other things. And um, setting all all this routing in the host is actually um, making uh, the uh, the product not really good in terms of maintenance and all that stuff. So. Uh, our uh, first design pr principle um, in doing this, we wanted to uh, use a network container um, and put the proxy um, in the network container. Okay, and um, this is um, and the second design principle that we actually have was to uh, maximize the parallel processing. I mean, this is not a new thing. I mean, you probably um, do this for um, you know, all the uh, the Linux-based uh, applications. Um, and also, um, we try to uh, minimize the, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, things across the uh, the NUMA boundary, basically to reduce the interrupts and context switches. And um, also, we also uh, run all the proxy instances on the same NUMA node, not just um, not just the um, the fast path, 
but all the um, the HIP proxies um, we end up running in the same NUMA node that actually um, manages the um, the PCI bus connect to the P PCI bus for the uh, the NIC. Okay. All right. So um, this diagram actually shows the inside the um, the inside of the um, the host. So basically, uh, what happens is. Um, for, um, so first of all, we actually use the uh, the two different VLANs for ingress and, and egress side. So let's say a packet uh, comes in to the um, the Ethernet, and then basically we use use the TC to actually uh, you know based on the um, the VLAN ID, we use TC to um, redirect the um, the packet to um, either um, C out uh, VETH or uh, S out VETH. So and then that will actually deliver the packet to um, the C in, um, and um, basically the VLAN will be actually popped at this point of time. Um, and um, what happens within the network container is everything actually um, you know coming out of the um, this VETH will be just uh, you know directed to the um, uh, the LO um, so loopback device. So that I don't really have to worry anything about, um, you know, the uh, the proxy routing. So um, that's how it's actually configured, and we also um, configured the uh, the default route to the client side first of all, um, and then have the HA proxy to actually um, bind the server side connection. Whenever it actually makes a server side connection, just bound it to the um, you no know, um, uh, this VETH so that um, we can actually very um, simplify the, um, the routing, okay? So um, by doing that, um, we don't really even need, you know, even need the uh, a IP uh, you know, table rules, um, basically um, um, because um, the, if you look at the IP table rules, the general IP table rules, um, it's basically, IP table rules is to actually just use the, uh, the uh, you know filter which packet to actually service and then which packet to actually give to the um, loopback device, right? However, um, in this model, uh, we are assuming we will actually uh, you know use the um, you know TC to do um, the packet routing or the packet filtering um, later on. So uh, assuming that anything that actually comes to this uh, you know B it will be actually serviced. So we didn't really have to worry about, um, you know, filtering further, okay? Um, so basically that is the configuration, um, very simple. Okay, um, so um, so three uh, scenarios, uh, the system um, configuration um, scenarios that we um, uh, consider are uh, the following. Basically, um, we once actually just use the kernel even without the net filter hooks, um, and then because we don't really need IP table rules, and then the next one was uh, we actually used the uh, the kernel with IP table hooks, but uh, we didn't use the IP uh, you know uh, net filter hooks, but no IP table rules were configured, and then the third scenario was to actually uh, you know use the IP table um, to actually um, do the um, what is it? The um, sort of netting, because uh, this is actually um, interesting. Um, is because if you if your proxy is just a, uh, you know, listen to a handful of the ports, destination port, then you probably don't even need this. But if you want to actually cover a wide range of uh, you know ports to be terminated, then uh, maybe using the IP table might be uh, in a better way, and then do the netting might be the, uh, you know um, better way. So we actually considered, uh, you know, these uh, three scenarios. Okay. Um, all right. So performance tuning options that we, uh, you know, considered. Uh, obviously, um, the NIC RSS. So distributing traffic among uh, multiple uh, receiving queues will actually, you know, um, increase the parallelism in uh, packet processing. So um, that is um, a must. Um, an option to uh, consider. Um, and then um, we actually consider symmetric and asymmetric RSS. What I mean by that is if all the, t uh, you know, the TCP packets and ACK packets are actually handled by a same core, then 
basically we might actually have a little bit better uh, you know performance so um, that is actually another uh, option that we actually consider okay um, the next thing um, is fast path numa bind binding what I mean by that is uh, we actually bind the um, the RSS queues to the NIC attached NUMA node. So that means the NUMA node that's actually you know um, uh, directly connected to the, uh, the the NIC through the PCI bus is actually what we are um, binding the um, um, the RSS uh, you know queues. And um, in our um, evaluation, we didn't actually show the number, but we first actually, um, we actually forget to do this and then run the test and then we actually um, get like, you know, probably quarter of the performance of what we could actually get at the end. So, uh, you know, um, I just want to mention that, but uh, I'm not going to actually show the result uh, in this presentation. Okay, um, the other thing um, is actually proxy NUMA binding. What I mean by that is um, we actually run the proxy process itself themselves onto the NUMA node um, that actually connected to the uh, the NIC, and surprisingly, I mean, even though we were do we were using um, splicing, it actually um, impacted the performance. So uh, we were um, thinking that um, even um, the um, the socket structure um, access um, through the NUMA boundary is actually causing some um, you know performance degradation. So um, that was actually one thing that we considered. Okay, and obviously splicing because we are L4, the layer four. I mean, I don't really need to um, read all the packets out of the kernel, um, so we uh, actually consider the you know, splicing option um, as much as possible. And for um, for curiosity, I mean, I just we just wanted to understand like you know what is uh, the performance of uh, HTTP proxy probably, um, you know, po uh, this is more like, you know, uh, the header processing and all that stuff. I'm not sure if the, um, you know, HA proxy um, has the best um, implementation of the header processing and stuff like that, but um, anyway, we actually just, uh, you know, evaluated that as well. Okay, um, before we actually do the evaluation um, of the proxy performance, the first thing we actually have to solve is L2 performance. I mean, we need to make sure the um, our um, test bed is actually configured right, um, not to be the bottleneck at the L2. So, um, what we did was um, uh, we actually first of all um, created like uh, 128 TC graphs because we were thinking to actually use a TC to do the um, you know service routing and um, service. Um, orchestration, uh, we actually created like 128 TC graphs um, and then um, and then um, actually um, use those things uh, just a little bit. Probably 128 is actually not enough to do the um, service orchestration so, such as for this um, source IP, I'm not, I don't want to do the, um, you know, uh, what is it, the uh, provide the, uh, the proxy service and stuff like that. If you need to actually implement that, it's probably going to need uh, much more than 128 TC graph. But um, to actually start up, I mean, we actually, you know, configure like 128 TC graphs and, um, and send a packet through it. Okay, uh, we actually um, use the 12 RSS queues. Um, and then um, the Q disk was uh, MP, uh, MQ prior, um, and then we um, play around with the uh, the net debt budget um, and end up like setting up setting it to uh, you know four thousand. Okay, um, and then uh, we actually use the uh, the pack, uh, qualified metric of um, you know packets per second and average latency. So those are the two things that we actually looked at. Um, so one thing um, that we actually found. Before actually use the uh, the MQ uh, you know prior Q disk, we just used the prior Q disk, and then we found that the performance is actually horrible um, because because of the lock. So we uh, moved to um, you know the MP um, MQ prior Q disk, but uh, the uh, we still had like not not a very good uh, you know performance, and then we actually found that um, because we were actually using um, what is that? The the, uh, the VLAN TC actions to actually pop and push the uh, the VLAN, and that was actually using um, spin lock, and we were um, uh, hold by uh, that spin lock. So we end up changing that 
um, to use the RCU. Um, and Jamal, I mean, are we done? Oh, okay. So uh, we are actually submitting the patch uh, at this moment. So after we um, get around with this issue, um, then basically uh, we um, were able to push a lot of, uh, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, traffic um, through um, through uh, this system. So basically, we use the uh, the UDP packets. Uh, if you look at it, this one. So basically, instead of HA proxy. Um, we just make sure that, uh, you know, this, whatever comes here, the UDP packet goes here, and then whatever comes this UDP packet goes here, we actually configure that, and then push the, um, you know, um, the packet from the server side and then client side, um, the UDP packets uh, in at um, 10, um, 10 gigabps each side. So um, um, that's how we actually, um, you know, did this test, okay? <coughs> so by doing that, um, when the uh, the packet size was actually uh, small, um, we were able to achieve around um, seven uh, million packets per second. Uh, but as we actually grow um, the packet sizes, then um, basically uh, we were able to achieve uh, you know maximum um, what is it the throughput um, of 20 gig. This 20 gig is actually bidirectional. So sir, uh, client to server side UDP and then server to client side UDP uh, was actually, uh, you know, um, was actually 20 gig. Um, so um, with this um, L2 configuration, this actually shows that um, the NIC and the, uh, the path is not the bottleneck. So uh, we moved on to the next test. Okay, um, so first of all, um, we use three different systems. So um, uh, this actually graph shows the um, um, the uh, the transaction per second, the achieved transaction per second. This transaction per second is not TCP transaction per second, but pair of TCP transaction per second. I would um, say this is um, proxy transaction per second, and that transaction per second number um, was. Let's look at the blue, uh, compare the blue lines, uh, because the blue, uh, um, so this is a system using um, uh, no net filter. Net filter was not there. This is net filter compiled in. This is using IP table. You can actually see a slight, um, uh, where is that, degradation uh, in uh, the packets, uh, where is that, the transaction per second. Um, but it wasn't, uh, you know, that much. and. Um, so basically, uh, when we were using the kernel without even, uh, you know, without uh, a net filter, then we were able to, I mean, this is with all the, um, you know, optimization, we were able to, um, you know, get around 97K um, transaction per second. Um, and uh, 94, when we are actually using the kernel, that actually has the, uh, um, the hooks, the net filter hooks. Uh, with the IP table rules, we actually, you know, um, got like 93K. But uh, I believe this is actually ignorable um, for our cases. So I would um, say um, based on our need, we might uh, choose this option or this option. Okay. All right. Um, and also um, the next thing is the NUMA binding. Um, so um, when um, I... I didn't, uh, so accidentally, we didn't actually set the NUMA binding uh, for the proxy processes, the 20 proxy processes that we have. And uh, it was all over the place. Uh, I mean, like, you know, either um, the NUMA 1 or NUMA 2. And the performance was actually going up and down. I mean, it was not even, like, you know, what is it, the um, consistent. So when we actually look at the, uh, the IRQ, um, some cores actually have a very high IRQ. Um, you know, utilization. So I said, oh, what is going on? And um, I ac we actually look at a little further and then basically found that um, the, um, the whichever, um, what is that, the, the core that is not, um, that actually has to, um, has to um, serve the, um, the memory access data for the other, um, uh, what is that, the proxy uh, was actually causing a high RQ um, utilization, CPU utilization. So 
after we uh, make sure everything comes to the um, the NUMA one um, node, then basically um, the performance actually um, you know jumped up to um, 97. So this is um, one of the things that we actually found. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing um, is um, the RSS symmetric or uh, asymmetric. So um, I was actually expecting a um, little more than this uh, when we actually um, do the asymmetric. I mean, symmetric over asymmetric. But the um, there was a small, um, you know, incre uh, increase in performance, but not too much. I mean, if you uh, compare the blue and then yellow or the green. Is it green or yellow? I think it's green there. So um, then basically uh, the improvement is not uh, you know, that much. Okay. Um, All right, so then um, this uh, in impact of splicing. So I was expecting a little more than this, but you know the fact that we are using um, AK uh, object download um, basically, uh, the impact of splicing um, is will be not too much, but you know, as we um, increase the object size, I believe the uh, the impact of uh, you know splicing the socket will um, will actually um, improve the uh, the performance. However, um, what we actually found is um, this is actually the case with the TCP um, TCP proxy, and then this is when we actually set to uh, the TCP mode of the, I mean, the proxy mode of the HA proxy to HTTP. Um, HTTP um, mode of a small, uh, you know, object transfer, we didn't really have any benefit of um, splicing as expected. And what's a little bit um, not intuitive was um, this is actually. Um, this graph actually shows the um, um, the delay in terms of um, you know time to the first byte, um, uh, in terms of response byte was actually going uh, going up when splicing was actually on. So it's like um, that's a little bit um, awkward. Uh, but what we found was um, it was basically um, bec uh, even though um, the splicing is on. Um, what what happens is uh, uh, the the receiver side. I mean, when when it actually get received the uh, the um, the header, it actually read us a uh, header to a certain extent, and uh, you know send the res uh, and and actually transfer that uh, t uh, HTTP header and write it to um, the uh, the client side socket, and then it actually calls the um, uh, what is it the splicing, and then splicing um, system call itself actually delayed a little bit. Um, so uh, even the data was actually a small number of data was actually in the um, to transmit queue uh, uh, towards the client side. Um, it was just waiting for um, a little more data to actually come before uh, we sent the first packet, and that was actually you know causing a little bit of a, you know uh, more delay here. Okay. Um, Okay, and uh, for the last one, um, we actually, when we compared the TCP proxy and HTTP proxy, um, the mode change, then uh, as you can see, we actually have a huge, um, you know, um, degradation in terms of um, the performance uh, when we use the HTTP. That is actually as expected, but uh, we haven't actually looked further um, to um, what uh, what actually caused this much of degradation. I mean, if uh, our hunch was, um, if we are actually, you know, parsing the, um, um, what is it, the, um, the the headers without copying the headers uh, all over the place, then I was expecting about, uh, you know, same similar performance, not like here, but maybe around here. But it seems like, uh, you know, HA proxy uh, is not too much optimized in uh, header processing. Okay, um, so the conclusion um, of this talk is as follows. So we actually um, build a high scalable uh, transparent um, um, performance enhancement proxy on Linux using an open source HA proxy. Um, simple, uh, but I think it's actually um, efficient. I mean, in order to prioritize this, we, we probably need uh, you know more work, but as a POC, I think this um, was 
this POC was actually enough to, um, you know, give the uh, the upper um, limit of uh, you know performance that we are expecting from uh, a single card. Okay. Um, so our transparent uh, pad achieved around um, 97, so close to 100k TPS. Um, only using uh, a single NUMA node. So the second NUMA node was actually completely doing nothing. Um, and um, uh, with uh, no C uh, 14 um, core CPU and hyperthread uh, um, 28 RSSQs using RSSQs and uh, with the 8K object size, we were uh, able to achieve uh, you know this number, right? 100K TPS. Okay, um, so um, and also we um, show the uh, uh, show the uh, the major performance tuning designs, and then what their well, how uh, you know uh, their impact on the um, this particular um, you know workload, um, and that's our contribution here. So the uh, the future work. Um, so we would like to. I mean, we only had like you know two. Um, 10 gig XCR port for this uh, project because um, you know our um, development team was actually very actively using the XIA. so um, we didn't uh, we couldn't actually pump the data uh, faster than you know 10 gig um, but um, since we are uh, since I actually have chance to get more XIA port I would like to push more realistic uh, you know traffic model um, into uh, the proxy and see uh, the, um, what is the uh, the numbers in terms of performance. Okay, um, and uh, I was really happy to actually see the multi PCI socket uh, network device um, talk. So, if possible, I, I would I would love to actually uh, you know use that NIC to um, pump the uh, the traffic to both the uh, the NUMA node and get the um, the best out of the uh, you know this card. Okay, so that is uh, another thing that I could do. And then another thing is um, I would like to work on the, uh, you know, the TC scaling um, as a tool for uh, containerized service orchestration. Um, this is what I, um, you know, explained um, as a uh, given example of like, you know, bypass flow and those kind of things could be actually, um, you know, uh, orchestrated using TC. And also, um, or maybe a little more, um, it's hard to actually say right now, but if it's more um, complicated um, uh, routing, um, forwarding, uh, for the um, terminated traffic, then probably uh, using TC might be the, uh, the, the better option. Um, if it's just the, uh, the bypass, then probably uh, XTP uh, would be the right layer to uh, you know, uh, enforce the um, the policy. So um, those are those things are actually um, um, I left uh, no as the uh, the the future work. Okay. Okay. Um, so I would like to actually thank you, uh, thank to uh, basically uh, my manager uh, DJ to actually uh, allow me to actually come to this uh, wonderful um, conference and uh, Mark. Uh, who actually uh, let me use, uh, you know, the Ixia. Um and Anand uh, Reika, who actually did, uh, you know, run most of the tests for me. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So I'm curious. Uh, can you share anything about the uh, results you had w with the proxy itself? in terms of improving the performance of TCP in your network? Um, I know it's an orthogonal task. Sure, I mean, that. yeah, we have data. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can actually share in uh, maybe next net dev. Okay, sounds good. So you mentioned some performance issue with Splice. I think there are some bugs w with Splice right now. Uh, we need to fix them. And w another issue uh, with Splice is that when you receive packets um, which are 1500 bytes long, um, and when we splice them to the outgoing TCP sockets, uh, an SKB has only 17 um, fragments available. 
by default in the shared info, meaning that outgoing SKB won't be 64K long, but um, much less than that. So that might explain some performance issue. So one uh, thing you could try is to increase the max SKB frag in the Linux um, include mm -hmm. skbuff.h and increase that to like 45 and run your, uh, your test again. I guess you could get some performance improvement like that. Okay, doing that. thanks for the comment. I'll try that. Okay, thank you very much.